Hi everyone, welcome back to the session. In this session, we are going to discuss about the joints. Requirements of joints, need for joints, and also the types of joints will be discussed. Joints are discontinuities in the concrete pavement slab and help to release stresses due to temperature variation, subgrade moisture variation, shrinkage of concrete, etc. Some of the requirements of joints are as follows. The joint must be, uh, it permit movement of the slabs without restraint. The joint should be, should not be unduly weaken the slab structurally and load should be transferred from one slab to another slab effectively. And whenever there is a heavy rainfall, the joints should not allow the water to percolate inside the different component layers of the pavement. That is nothing but it should exclude water, grit and other external matters. The riding quality of the pavement should not be impaired. The construction of the joints must interfere as little as possible with the laying of the concrete. Some of the requirements for joint construction are all foreign material in the joints should be removed first. The manual cleaning of the joints is done with a racker followed by coir brushing. The fine particles are removed with the help of air compressor. After the joints have been cleaned, primaries used. Moving on to the need for joints. Concrete pavements are subjected to volumetric changes produced by temperature variations, shrinkage during setting and changes in moisture content. If a long slab is built, it is bound to crack at cross intervals because of such factors. The joint should be sealed flush with the adjacent pavement surface on either side in summer and should be filled to a depth of three to four mm below the surface in winter so that they may become flush on expanding during hot weather. Dual bars are required for the transverse joints to transfer part load across the adjacent slab. And also there is a need of stresses becoming critical. Assist, assist in the event of loss of subgrade support at the location of joint. Dual bars are generally mild steel, round bars embedded and bounded into concrete on one side of the joint and on the other half length deliberately prevented from bonding with concrete on that side. A recess is provided at the sliding end for free movement of slab when used in the expansion joints. The longer the length between the joints, the greater is the warping stress and the greater is the need for reinforcing the steel. So moving on to the types of joints. The classification of joints in concrete slabs are given below. The first one is expansion joints. Then we have contraction joints, warping joints, construction joints and longitudinal joints. Let us understand each of the joints in detail. Expansion joint. Expansion joints are provided along the transverse direction to allow the movement. That is expansion or contraction of the concrete slab due to the temperature and subgrade moisture variation. It is normally a transverse joint. Expansion joints also relieve stresses caused by contraction and warping. Expansion joints are omitted altogether in modern practice. The features of expansion joints are there should be a space for expansion which is generally of 20 mm. A joint filling compressible material interport in the above space and it should be a joint sealing arrangement. And there should be a double bar for load transforming and a thin coating of bitumen in the expanding portion of the dual bar to break the bond with concrete and permit expansion. A cardboard or metal cap at the expanding end of the dual bar is filled with cotton waste. Expansion joint is shown in the figure here.
moving on to the contraction joint contraction joints are provided along the transverse direction to take care of the contraction of concrete slab due to its natural shrinkage these are provided whenever the construction work stops temporarily the joint direction could be either along the transverse or longitudinal direction when the temperature of concrete falls below the laying temperature the slab contracts if a long length of slab is laid the contraction induces tensile stresses and the slab cracks if the joints are provided at suitable intervals transversely the appearance of the cracks at place other than joints can be eliminated some of the features of the contraction joints are as follows the surface groove formed by driving a flat metal plate when the concrete is green it is not less than 6 mm wide and also a depth equal to 1/4 of the depth of the pavement contraction joint is as shown in the figure a sealing compound of compound to prevent ingress of external material and a double bar arrangement to adequately transfer the load across the joint this is dispense with with the considerable aggregate interlock which has to enable to transfer the loads moving on to the warping joints warping joints are also known as hinge joints are uh, these are provided along the longitudinal direction to prevent warping of the concrete slab due to temperature and subgrade moisture variation a major difference between the warping joint and the expansion or contraction joints is that the former appreciable changes in the joint width are prevented this is achieved by continuation of reinforcing steel through the joint or by installation of bars across the joints the last one is construction joint the construction joint becomes necessary when work has to be stopped at a joint at a point where there would be otherwise no other joint it is adver advisable to plan a day's work such that the work stops at a contraction or expansion joint such joints should be regular in shape by placing a cross form in position the reinforcement the reinforcement should be continued across the joint a groove in the joint with a ceiling compound will arrest the entry of foreign material matter and desirable materials one more joint one more type of joint is longitudinal joint the purpose of longitudinal joints is being to reduce the warping stresses and uneven settlements it is necessary to provide for some form of load transferring devices load transferring is done by tie bars generally of 12.5 mm to 25 mm dia at 60 cm centers of a length of 1 meter the joints is of a butt type and as shown it is in the figure below alternatively a tongue and groove joint may be provided with a suitable tie rods of 25 mm diameter 1 meter long and at 60 to 75 centimeter center to center distance but type longitudinal joint with a tie bar is shown in the figure so this is all about the necessity and requirements of the joint constructions and also the types of joints under the rigid payments thank you